Reviews programs, welcome back to Arc New Reviews. Uh, sorry for the lull in videos, things are still going to be a little hit and miss here and there. Uh, for anyone who doesn't follow my Twitter, A, do, that's where I do little status updates and stuff, as I don't have a community tab here on YouTube yet. But uh, I've finally found some stable employment, and I basically took the week off of YouTube to just focus on trying to adjust to the new job. Uh, clearly some more adjusting is going to need to happen, but, you know, I, I, I got some time in to just focus and stuff, so that's all good. But I figured I'd come back and do something I haven't done before, because here and there I know I've dipped into different, you know, pop culture, you know, NECA and various Hasbro, you know, six-inch action figures. So for fun, I decided I'd actually take a look at one of the other really, really big sources of six-inch action figures, that being the WWE wrestling figures. So I've got two figures uh, because these things do actually come in multiple price points, which is kind of unique actually for action figure lines like this. But uh, first figure we'll go ahead and look at here. I'm not sure what the line was called. I can't remember. I did unfortunately uh, throw the packaging away <laughs> too early. But I've got Sarah Connor here. I know nothing about wrestling. I, I fully admit I'm an absolute poser when it comes to that. I'm looking at action figures as action figures and <laughs> nothing beyond that. But this is one of the $10 carded figures that they put out. And I've got to say, it's pretty impressive you know the face sculpt is got a little bit of that uncanny valley thing going on which is really common when you try to do a you know very accurate to a real person action figure that's to be expected but the the paint apps and tamper graphs on this figure are actually really really impressive you can see like the little I, I guess those are like ribbons around her hair there, you know, she's got, you know, the, the whole riot thing on her, uh, sports bra, I guess, but, you know, they, they, they bothered to do all of her tattoo and, you know, the, the cross straps even under her hair, hair's a little bit rubbery so it can move, there's printed detail all the way around her shorts, and, What's really, really neat, actually... Oh, yeah, and then there's a tattoo on her leg. Um, these knee pads here are actually rubber. So, even though, yes, this is a solid piece, you do still get a joint underneath there, which is a really neat touch. Yes, it does hinder the range of motion, but having worn, you know, similar things before... That happens in real life, so it's completely accurate. So, you, the the paintwork and sculpting is actually really, really good, I have to say. Um, range of motion is not too bad here. Uh, the head is on a ball joint, so you get rotation, you know, some tilt, and, you know, different angles and stuff. Uh, depending on the hair of your figure, if they even have hair, uh, that will be kind of your main hindering point. You've got universals here in the shoulders, so you get, you know, rotations... Arms can't quite go down as far as I would expect them to, but they can actually go out and up. Again, really, really good sculpted detail. You've got, you know, not quite 90 degrees at the elbow. There is a rotation at the elbow as well. You've got a rotation at the wrist. Uh, you will notice very quickly if you ever go look at these figures on the shelf. They do always have a fist on the right hand and then an open left hand. Uh, there is waist articulation, though you really don't want to actually use it because it <laughs> it does bad things. <laughs> um, ball joint up here for the hip, so she can kick out, she can kick forward and back some. Uh, ironically and kind of awkwardly, the way they sculpted her butt keeps her leg from going back very far. You've got the joint there for the knee, and there is a rotation hidden at the edge of the boot. 
which is a really, like that's a smart way to do it, you know? So I've got to give them points for that. So kind of on average, this is what you get with the $10 range of the wrestling figures, which is already not bad. But then you look at their boxed $20 ones, and for this I do even have the box actually. Uh, th this one is, uh, it it's going to be Nikki Cross as you can tell. Uh, again, these are just kind of at random. But these ones boast a true effects thing going on with them. Uh, first time that she got a figure apparently here, Elite Collection. Picture of her on the side. Uh, Another picture of her on the back. She's from Scotland. She's exactly five foot tall. And she has a finisher called the Purge. Up here it explains that, you know, basically they're doing a 3D scan to replicate the face on these figures. There's the other figures that came out in this line, or this wave, I guess. A little bit of a uh, bio, that's the word I'm looking for. Again, I know nothing about wrestling, but the fact she's from Scotland and she's like basically goes in this ring and like laughs and smiles at everyone. Uh, I, I thought that was actually kind of cool. So yeah, I, I got the figure based solely on the bio. I'll actually go uh, sometime here. I'll actually go look up some videos of her wrestling, but. The figure itself, they actually really, really step things up for your extra, you know, $10 price point. Because right off the bat, you can see we've got a lot more, you know, clothing going on, which is all, you know, removable. This is your her, her entry gear, I guess. So you can go ahead, you can take off the hood, get her face. And you can actually come down here and the strap on this, uh, I guess it's a vest, I'm, I'm not sure, it's sleeveless jacket, whatever it is, uh, it tabs into the side here and you actually take it off the way you would just a proper vest, you know, or coat or whatever, Move, pull her arms behind her back and they actually really really increase the posability of these figures for that extra little bit of money. So on this one, again, you've got really, really great sculpted detail. In fact, uh, you can even take off the glasses. Face is, it's actually less uncanny, <laughs> even though it's done probably more realistically than the other figure. So th th they it definitely looks a little better in that regard. Um, you got the universals in the shoulders still, uh, heads on a ball joint. The hair is actually made out of a softer material as well, so you get a little bit more range of motion, which is nice. But like I said, universal in the shoulder here. And then now you have a swivel at the bicep uh, instead of the elbow, which is, it, it's kind of nice because it does keep that sculpt a little more solid. Though the exact way they've done the elbow joint is weird because it's got, you know, like this big pin in the middle of it. But e either way, you know, you still get that. You still got the fist and the flat hand. You got the wrist rotations. But now you also have a uh, art, arch, arc, whatever. <laughs> she, she has torso articulation. So you can actually, like, bend her over in the middle and have her like, you know, hunch over, or pull back a little bit. She's still got the waist rotation there. And at least this figure, because she's got this rubber shirt on, that actually, it, it, it helps hide the, you know, mold breaking that's going on when you actually use that joint there. So that's nice. Uh, the hips are the same, it's still the ball joint, still sculpted butt kind of keeps her legs from moving back. But there is a thigh swivel now, which is already nice touch. Little bit more knee articulation, though that's probably just down to the lack of knee pads. And the foot is a ball joint, I believe. So you actually, er, nope, nope. 
I think that's universal up in there. But e either way, you can like actually move the ankle, you know, up and down, left and right, a little bit of tilt even. So definitely a step up in terms of posability. And you know, again, let's just kind of go back to the fact that they bothered making working sunglasses on a figure this scale. That's actually really, really impressive. I don't see a lot of figures do that. As well as, I'm just gonna address this now to keep it from being as, to try to be, and I'll try to be as uh, not weird about it as I can, but because this shirt is rubber, there is a very high chance that this is just going to de degrade over the years. That That is the unfortunate truth of action figures with rubber pieces. But I can say they've apparently thought about that, or at least thought about people who would take this off in general, because there is actually a sculpted and painted sports bra underneath, and like her actual torso has been molded as well. I've seen a lot of figures where if they put a piece of clothing over that's rubber like this or something, they'll just go ahead and completely skip out on doing any molding underneath because, well, that's on there. You don't need it. And then should this piece degrade and come off over time, now you have something that looks terrible. They've actually kind of future-proofed the figure here. Nice touch. And goes without saying, you know, the paint details and all the little sculpting bits and stuff like that. Really, really good. Um, th these being the only two figures I have, I can't really say if, you know, these ones in general have more paint and sculpting, but they do have some more joints. They come with extra accessories. And either way, yeah, these are... These are pretty fun figures, actually. You know, even just to have as just you know people in your you know random six inch figure collection whatever you know I, I have a lot of these figures they're all you know superheroes or I've got a Jason Voorhees I've got Robocop so it's kind of fun to just have some people in the mix you know I I, I, I don't know why that's just me but yeah, overall, I gotta say, these figures are actually, they're, they're pretty good stuff. You know, especially the $10 ones are way better than you would expect for that price drop. But then they still do enough extra when you get the $20 figure to bring it up. I wish the wrists were a little more articulated. And as far as I've seen, you do have to go even the next step beyond these to get interchangeable hands and stuff, the way that you get with, you know, Marvel Legends and NECA and stuff. But, still, yeah, these are actually some pretty neat figures. And, again, while I'm not a wrestling guy, funny enough, my great-grandmother used to watch wrestling every time it hit the TV. But, you know, I, I... Me not even being a wrestling fan, I can say, these are cool figures you know I like the designs and the sculpt the sculpt work on here you know let's face it it's wrestling it's fake I am still buying figures of a character more than anything else and yeah they're pretty good figures so if you see one that you know the design strikes your fancy or you've got a use for a person of that body type or whatever pick them up they're, they're not bad. So, yeah. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And as always, I will see you next time. Which will hopefully be sooner rather than later.